very much. <clears throat> I am so happy that you could be with General Colin Powell, one of the great intellectual, moral, ethical, and military leaders of our country. And today we have another general with us, General Belinda Pinckney. U.S. Army retired, so we are well represented. In every speech I make, I say something I truly believe. Since the beginning of our country, there have been two institutions that have sustained the democracy. One of them is the United States Army stretched but strong. The other is public education, and the house is on fire. Today, I would like to talk about something close to my heart, and I hope to yours. Every one of you sitting here has had a defining moments that determined the person you are, the leader you have become. And as I share with you my defining moment, I hope you will think about your defining moments. Each one of you has one. My defining moments happened when I was eight years old. I lived in the mountains of western Pennsylvania, Johnstown, big coal, big steel, big hearts. Nine miles away was a little coal mining railroad town, South Fork, Pennsylvania. My grandparents lived there. My grandfather had a small men's clothing store played the pipe organ in the Methodist Church every Sunday and was justice of the peace from the time he was 38 years old until he was 96 and he died in office. I loved my grandmother. She had the greatest impact upon my life and my work, she and my father, to this day. Now, they had seven children, built a big house, of course, you need five bedrooms, and in the living room, they thought it was only natural to have an 18-foot ceiling and build into the house a small church-sized pipe organ. I loved that room, I just loved it. Up around the ceiling were stained glass windows and the light would bring little rainbows in. And when I was eight years old, I would stand in, in trance. But every Saturday, I would say to my grandmother, we would be in the music room, and above the keyboard were two beautiful, tall, ancient Chinese vases. Every Saturday, I would say, please, Mama Wicks, may I touch the Chinese vases? No, no one may ever touch them next Saturday. Please, Mama Wicks, could I just pat? No. So one Saturday, I guess I was feeling rather aggressive at eight <laughs> years old. I actually stamped my foot at my grandmother and I said, I want those vases. Instead of telling me what a bad girl I was, she took me by my hand, opposite the pipe organ was a love seat. We sat down, and she put her arm around me and said, let me tell you about the Chinese vases. Long, long ago, when your mother was eight years old, some days she and your little, her little sisters would come home from school crying 
because the bad boys were chasing Mr. Yi. Now, in that little town was a Chinese laundryman who lived in a little whitewashed shed with two tubs where he washed, of course, washed the clothing by hand. Every Tuesday, he picked up my grandfather's shirts. Thursday, he brought them back beautifully washed, starched, ironed. He wore traditional Chinese robe, hair in a queue. One day, there is a knock on the kitchen door. And my grandmother goes to the door, and there is Mr. Yi with a very large package wrapped in newspaper. My grandmother says, oh, Mr. Yi, please come in. Won't you sit down? He stood there, handed her the package. This is for you, he said. She opened it, and here were these two exquisite, ancient Chinese vases. And she said, oh, Mr. Yi, I couldn't possibly accept them. They are far too valuable. I want you to have them, he said. My grandmother said, but Mr. Yi, why do you want me to have the vases? He looked at her and said, I am going back to China. They won't, I have been here 10 years. They will not let me bring my wife and my children and I miss them too much and I am going back to China. And the vases are all I brought with me and I want you to have them. My grandmother looked at Mr. Yi and said, in her sweet, quiet way, Mr. Yi, why do you want me to have the vases? He looked at her, a tear came down his cheek. He said, Mrs. Wick, I have been in this town for 10 years and you are the only person who ever called me Mr. Yi. I cried my heart out. My grandmother held me. I cried my heart out for Mr. Yi. And that was the defining moment of my life. Respect for all people that would determine the person I am today, the leader I have become. That was when I was eight years old. 1998, long history. 1998, I am in the White House in the East Room and I, one side is Admiral Tom Walt. On the other side is David Rockefeller. And here in a wheelchair, it's the great civil rights leader, James Farmer. And we are there and we are about to receive our country's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I'm overwhelmed, I can't believe, I, I'm still overwhelmed, can't, couldn't believe I was there. And when the ceremony began, and over here was a lecture, well, oh, very low stage, a lecture where Mrs. Clinton was standing over here, another one where the president was standing. A young naval officer would read the citation and then the president would present the medal. 
So they would say, Admiral Zumwalt, will you please come up? He would come up and there would be this wonderful young military officer at your age. When it was my time to come up, and in a citation, I heard the president say, pioneer for women, diversity, opportunity. And my grandmother and Mr. Yi were with me because that was a defining moment when I learned respect for all people. And in today's world, in our own country, where we have the lowest level of trust and the highest level of cynicism, and we seem to have forgotten civil discourse in a civil society. And you and your remarkable organization can take the lead. We can disagree with people. We do not use destructive language. When someone in my presence says something ugly about our president, I say, I beg your pardon, I am an American and I love my country. And may I suggest please that you voice disagreement if you choose with our president's action, but you never use disparaging language about our president. Thank you very much for permitting me to be with you. It's been a great honor.